that? My name's Don Scudder. Uh, hey. Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy. Nancy, nice Nelson. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Our county assessor, right here, Hi. Josh Gibson. Hi. Kevin G, official video videographer. Guilty. Graffer, my wife. Hello. Yeah, hi. Well, I read this in the newspaper. Well, we tried to, you know, publicize it the best we could, so we were just talking about that. Just, uh, doesn't seem to be any really specific hot buttons. I mean, the marijuana thing's an issue to uh, talk about, and the GMO thing still is, and so, but uh, there really is nothing that's got anybody that, wow, oh, I got Oh, we have two new commissioners. We have two new commissioners, and I was just saying I had invited them to come uh, this evening. <laughs> well, you know, but, uh, well, we'll start here in just, it is 6.30, so um, let's see, Josh and, and I'm sorry, your first name again, I'm sorry. Nancy. Nancy, I should know that one of our best friends. Um, Sharon and Kevin's been here before, so they know the, the, the drill, which is, it's really the meeting. So, I mean, it's your meeting. So the, my idea is just sit here and try to answer any questions that might uh, be with something to do with the county that you want to talk about. Uh, that a, that a commissioner may have some some sway over or at least some input in. Well, are we starting? Yes, we are. Oh, we are starting. Okay, what was your position on, yes, on 92? On 92, on... Uh, the labeling. Was the labeling. Okay, I was opposed to it. Hmm. Okay. And why was that? Well, and the reason why is I think that... Uh, it was, it's going to be that I probably buy into to the arguments, the, the Ones against it, additional cost, additional confusion. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Uh, to the whole issue, and and until, well, I'm going to be really upfront with you, okay? Because that's the only way I know how to be. I was opposed to the ban on GMOs, as well. So I'm already halfway there. The labeling, uh, so I just naturally was was felt against the labeling, because to me, I haven't seen enough proof. Scientific proof, not emotional, that says that GMOs are, are going to be harmful to human beings. So that that's my position, and uh, was then, and it is now. And so again, it's just a natural follow through. So the labeling to me just seemed like another. Can I say any other way? Sort of a scare tactic. So mm, that's interesting. I campaigned very hard okay. for Measure 92. I got the most signatures in the state to get it on to the ballot. And there's certainly, I would love to have had the opportunity to have talked to you because actually Monsanto ads are the ones that did the scare tactic. We had facts, we had solid facts. And 64 other nations of the world believe that there are enough independent scientific research valid data to have health concerns, not to mention environmental concerns. So we still haven't lost. Oh, I, I we're, would. We're one half of 1% <laughs> away from catching up with the victorious. Well, if you should, I, 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 who knows? You have to say you're very, very close. But I liken it to other campaigns that, that you've uh, Got the door open now, so it'll it'll come again, and I'm assuming that sometime in the very near future it'll probably pass. But you asked me a question, and yes, I know yes, I only answer no, the honest no, way that the way you're you. not going to get a run around. Sure, sure. So if we were to loan you some documentaries, would you be willing to watch? I have read. Let me tell you. You know Brian Combs? I do. Okay. So I'm going to sit right here if you don't mind. I don't mean to violate yeah, your space. That's cool. I have read and watched ad nauseum information that Brian has sent me. What's Brian sent you? Oh, I've, I've, got, I've got a file. I've got my electronic <laughs> file on, on, this, on the stuff that, that came that way. Then I have a hard file and just document after document after document. I can go to the other side and I don't have as much, quite honestly, this, this file, the anti-GMO is much thicker, okay, than the, than the pro-GMO. But either one, so what I do is I kind of look and say, okay, so do, do uh, 
Now, you may have a different opinion on the one on the government or is it for us or against us, but I feel like that if they're saying that it's not, they're not going, they're not telling us to. I mean, they're the ones that are supposed to govern what, what, what is good and bad work from an eating standpoint. And, and they've had their scientists, which I understand the other side says, their scientists are the Monsanto scientists. Well, they're you industry. Will. They're industry, okay. So I use Monsanto as, a, as an umbrella right. for the industry, okay, because they're the boogeyman. And uh, I just haven't seen it, and I, and I look at this, but then I just get through looking this most recent thing that came out of France on the rat thing that, uh, that said that well, maybe they were wrong. Maybe that study wasn't this, and that didn't come from Monsanto. So it didn't come from the industry. So, you know, I don't know. So without enough evidence to say. Well, actually, the nation of France stands behind Dr. Sarah's research, and now that United Kingdom is going to redo the entire experiment because it is replicable, and they took the entire lifetime of the rats rather than 90 days. And in rat years compared to human years, by the time human beings would be 30 to 40, they would develop breast cancer, prostate cancer, inflammatory diseases, and all of the things that our hospitals are full of. But my question was, if I loaned you documentaries, not reading materials, but documentaries, would you be willing to watch them? I tell you what, I, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll tell you. I would watch some, yes. Quite honestly, I've only got seven weeks left in office. So. You're on the way out? Yes, I am. Oh, and why is that? Well, because. <laughs> because his wife's <laughs> there. <laughs> I said you can run for one term, that's why. <laughs> that's okay. So, I, so I, was, I, was honor, I have honored a promise that I made to my wife. <clears throat> so that's the reason. So that's the reason why. So I think I need to let you know that now. I mean, if, since you know that, if you don't want to, that's fine. And the same way with Brian. And, and after a while, I said, oh, no loss. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. But if you talk to him, you'll, you'll know that I, I dialogued with him. And so it wasn't a case where I just got it and put it in a you know, shelf. I, st I started researching this three years ago. And I've been writing a six-page once-a-week newsletter for three years. So. There's probably quite a lot of research, actually, that you didn't read from Polite. Well, I, no, I have not read every bit of research. I mean, I, I don't but, even want to intimate the, that I but have. But the documentaries sort of put it together. And there was an, a worldwide conference held in Shanghai, China, two months ago, and then an international conference held in Portland that I did attend. And there were 40 speakers. And the day after the international conference, actually, the U.S. government ordered um, more research to be done into the issue because of all the, um, the global, it's not just Oregon, it's a safety concern, a global concern. So that will be funded partly by the USDA and it will be let out to the universities so they should have their results in by 2016 when Vermont labeling would go into effect. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, there's just tons and tons of, of facts that the industry is hiding. Okay, all right, well. But if you're willing, I'll still I, I, I'm, you I'm willing, like I say, I, I won't guarantee that I'll watch every one of them, but I will look at them. And you might want to give me a priority to say, well, you're, you're only going to watch a couple or three. This is the one or that one or something. Okay? Sure. sure. All right, very good. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Hi. My name's Don. John. John? John, yeah. Nice to meet you. Come on in. This is just a, an open Q&A. So it's not my meeting, it's the people's here meeting. So it's, you got any questions about things that, that regards the county or this is a place to ask it, and if I don't have the answer, I won't. I won't fib about it. I'll say I'll try to find it, or right. you'll get it straight. Whatever I know. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Nice to have well, you. Here. Okay. All right. So no pressure on you. Oh, if you got a question? Go right ahead. I had a few. I'll wait for. No, that's all right. The, these folks. <laughs> We're last in line. <laughs> they, 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 they have. They have. They have probably haven't heard me way too many times. So. <laughs> And I'm his wife, and, and I'm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Oh no, I mean, not way too. Her late. hand went up, Don. I think. <laughs> So, John, do you have a question? Well, I was curious about how um, locals on Ashland or Mid County would, I, I'm sure there's a process for it, though. How would we go about making a uh, measure initiative or ballot initiative that would regard uh, taxes for businesses and the, the regulations, so to speak, on how the public can do that rather than the city taxes? So, let me see if I understand what you're asking. Uh, first of all, the referendums. Uh, by uh, the or the initiative, I should say, uh, the, depending on what the initiative it's a, if it's a, a funding measure or it's just an initiation for, uh, an initiative for a policy issue, uh, that depends on whatever one that is. Is how many percentage of the vote the electorate of the general election or the presidential election voters have to have signatures to sign. Okay, that's how that's how you that's how. Joe or Mary Public can work within a group to, to get something on. Perfect example is GMOs. We were just talking about the GMO uh, ordinance. That was that was that was an initiative created by a concerned group of citizens that got enough enough voters to get it on the ballot. Obviously, it passed. The other way is a referral or a referendum, and that's where the board of commissioners can say. We would like to place this on the ballot. A perfect example of that is a, the immediate past, and it was a library issue. That was a referendum placed on the ballot by the, by the board of commissioners. So those are two ways. So, but I think the answer to your question is how does how do folks out here in the in the general public how do they get something? That's how it is. Not easy because again it depends on on what the ballot is, is pointing for. Is this trying to raise money or some sort of taxation or something like that? You need a much higher percentage, or if it's, if it's a charter change, which is Jackson County's version of the state constitution, if you will. It's our county's constitution. Then it takes quite a few signatures to get it Again, it's a percentage of the vote that voted in the past presidential election. If it's something not, a little bit simpler, then it takes, I think, your petition so it seemed to me like oh, it was, got way more. oh, I know you got a lot more, but it seemed to me like it was six thousand. I think it was six thousand that you needed to qualify. Oh, we got so many more. Well, I know that, but I think that's what it was. So uh, anyway, that's all. Does that answer yeah. your question? Are, are is the public allowed to do um, measures that are townwide or citywide that are specific? Small oh sure. You mean you mean uh, if you wanted to do something in, in uh, do you live where do you live? Uh, I'm going to be a resident in Ashland. In Ashland. Okay. Fine. So a little different, uh, and, and I'm not an expert on Ashland's charter, so by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, but this is but um, in fact I'm going into waters. I, I'm not an expert. I'm not even a, as far as how they they said. I know that the council. Can put something kind of like the county commission. They can put something on the Ashland ballot as a referral. As far as an initiative, I'm not sure if the city of Ashland has that process in their charter they to do. do that. I would think they do. Pardon me. They do. Okay. Okay. I mean, it only makes sense that they would have. Uh, but I so you can do it in a, a local level, or more globally, or you know, statewide, or countywide, or statewide. Can I, does that process simply involve me standing on the corner of the clipboard and speaker and asking for the same thing? Yeah, I mean, that's one way to do it. Or you can do it the way that, uh, it's, uh, that unfortunately, the Oregon uh, system has gotten to where you start paying for, for, for signature gathers, mm -hmm. gatherers. So they're out at front of shopping malls and such, and they get paid for X amount of signatures that they get. But the original intent of the law, I believe, is exactly what you're saying. That's when. The citizens who really want something and they have a vested interest, they're out there looking to do that. But you now, politics, politics is a lot different now than it was in 1859 when we became a state. Mm -hmm. I hope that helped a little bit. Oh, yeah. But I, when I would do uh, is I would attend a National and City Council meeting. They meet on, on, uh, on Monday, evening, Tuesday evenings, and it is the second. First and third Tuesdays of the month, and they have a section in there where it's where citizens get up and, and just speak to the council on a non-agenda item, 
So anybody can get up and talk to them for three to five minutes. Depends on the mayor will decide how many people get to speak depending on how many get signed up on the list. So, but you could go and you could ask that question right there. I mean, that you'd be perfectly, and they would listen. I mean, now whether they do anything, I'm not sure, but I mean, you, could, you have that opportunity. You have that availability to sit and share your thoughts on that. And you could ask the question. Which brings up a question for me because a couple of years ago, the young teenage girl, Alexa, came and spoke to the commissioners during her public comment time asking for a moratorium on GMO crops mm -hmm. while the measure 15119 was circulating. And the commissioners totally did not ever respond to her. Okay, so here's, here's, the, here's the protocol on that, okay, is that the way that the, the county set up is it, it, it's not meant to be a town hall, okay, so it's not meant to where you come and you say, uh, Commissioner Scundry, can you do this? Okay, then Commissioner Scundry says, Nancy, so let's talk, and then you start having either a debate or a conversation, it's not set up like that. What it's set up for is for Nancy, I'm just talking about the county, to come speak to an issue that's that's not on the agenda, That's that's dear and near, dear to her heart, or whatever the case may be, and we give you five minutes and you can just, as long as you stay civil, you can share anything you want to. We don't have this dialogue. Now what we can do at the end, after Nancy has spoken, or this, then we can decide amongst the commissioners, does someone here want to respond to her or not? But we don't have, we don't have to. So that, that's, and I, I think I remember this young lady, she was very, she was very articulate. Yes. Yes, and I think she got a standing ovation or something, as I recall. She got quite a large audience. Yes. And yeah. Well, of course, the whole audience was all on the same side. So. <laughs> well, she got the TV cameras, Channel 5. But there was never any, I mean, she made her request, and there was never any further um, communication back to her. As well, as I recall, as I recall, it's been a while, but as I recall, she was, she was talking, she was asking, she wanted, the commissioners to step forward and do something about well, she, it. Well, she made a request for a moratorium. Yeah, and uh, you know, well, while the measure and, was being well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember from there on. I honestly don't. I don't know where that went, but uh, I do remember her speaking. It obviously got lost. <laughs> but she made she she was a brave young lady, and made her request. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, that's the way the process works. Good evening. How are you? Good. My name's Don. I'm Jill. Jill. Yo, oh, Jill. Okay. How are you? Good. So, um, talk a little bit about you. Tom. Since GMOs seem to be the hot subject tonight, I see that you're going to be talking at the staff meeting tomorrow about the implementation of 15119. Uh, can you make any comments about? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, been, there's been, uh, and, that's, and that's a reflection of the public, quite honestly, is that uh, it was passed by the people, overwhelmingly, mm -hmm. passed here in Jackson County. And in there, we had, uh, we have until, I think it was in May, uh, to, to do, actually go into effect, and I apologize, I may be wrong in the month. But, but the, the, if one, one looks at the ordinance, it tells the shalls and wills, about in the ordinance. And the question is coming up, well, okay, county, uh, this, this ordinance has been passed overwhelmingly, what are you gonna do about it? I mean, and we're hearing this from the pro ban, the anti-GMO folks. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do? So like all ordinances in the, in the, in the county were complaint driven. So if in fact, Nancy here, well, if you don't mind me using you as an example, says, I know that Sharon over here is planted GMO sugar beets. Okay, now we but have an ordinance. it's safe because I can't grow anything. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Ride with me with this for a moment, please. I have okay. no idea where they're and, and, and she has, And she has some visual proof or something. Then it's, and she makes a formal complaint to our code enforcement officer. Then just like any other ordinance then, we would have to go to investigate. 
we haven't done anything beforehand because the ordinance actually is not into effect yet. The, the, the issue is, is that the idea was is give the growers a season to get their then out of here. Okay, that was the deal. So that's the reason we haven't rushed to, to judgment or haven't rushed to do anything because there's nothing we can do right now. We, there's no sense as hiring extra code enforcement officers or anything until we wait. And, and we also understand that there is a, a movement on the other side, the pro-GMOs, to take it to court. And we're kind of waiting on that only from a little bit because we're precluded by statute. If, if it goes, if it goes, and by that they have to sue the county. The, the, the pro-GMO folks would have to sue the county and their, and their legal argument would be that this GMO ban is unconstitutional for the, for the county. So we would be the defendant. So we have to defend ourselves against a suit. Once that happens, then that stops all process and the lawyers take it over. So we're, you know, we're, we're trying to say, well, how much energy do we want to put into this if we, if if, this, if we're going to get hung up in court anyway? So, so, but I also understand the reason why it's on the agenda is because, gee whiz, guys, we ought to at least talk about what we're doing here, so folks don't think that we're just ignoring the voters, because we're not. I mean, I've already shared quite honestly that I was against it, but and I've said, but that was the will of the people. So, as an elected official, I have to enforce the will of the people. So. I haven't heard of any legal action yet from either side. Is there any that you're aware of? Well, that's my understanding. The, uh, I've heard that there, they will be coming, but I haven't heard that anybody's taken Well, we haven't yet. seen anything yet, but the, but uh, Commissioner Rasher or Commissioner Breidenthal was just telling uh, uh, Danny Jordan that that was coming here before the end of the, of the month, so I don't know. Okay. Well, may I comment? Yeah. Oregon is one of the few people's initiative states. There's only 18. And we have the right under our Oregon state constitution to take the initiative to bring it to ballot and to vote on it. And when Kitzhaber made his little deal and excluded the, other, the other counties from being able to ban the GMO crops, it was Peter Buckley and Senator Bates who got an exemption for Jackson County because we already had it on the ballot. So we that were was my understanding that you had qualified we the major for the ballot, so the legislature had been preempted deal. by your action. Yeah, we were exempted from Kids Happers mm -hmm. deal. So everything we did was legal under our people's initiative right. And our senator and our representative stood for us. It's one reason they got reelected. I don't. I think the legal argument is not so much that it's that the initiative was was illegal. It's it's the right to farm act and some things yeah. like that, and some and some Challenging personal property the, the rights. Yeah, property. that's my understanding. I, I am not a part of that. I know nothing. You know now what I know. But that's my understanding. But the right to farm does not give the right to harm. And the GMO cross-contamination harms the other farms who were here first. It sounds like you're still arguing well, the issue, here, even though it passed first, the voters. And they supply, they do seed saving, which they cannot do if they get cross-contaminated. And they supply the seed to the whole rest of the world to the organic growers. Okay, so Nancy, we've already, like I said, yeah. the, the initiative's already passed and such, so yeah. I don't think, you know, we're ready here for a debate because it's already it's already passed. We just, he has to ask about the legal issue. Kevin? Commissioner, you made a comment, uh, rightfully so, about the work sessions and the importance of that uh, session in the um, deliberation interaction between commissioners before decisions are actually made, then you bring them into the general work session on Wednesday morning. I agree with you very much, and um, I paid twenty-three dollars. I had to pay twenty-three dollars for a CD, and I appreciate Lynell being here and, and the hard work that she does. Lynell is, uh, is uh, are the board of commissioners' uh, assistant uh, that does uh, all the hard work. That's right, and exactly. And um, I, I just wanted to make a suggestion that that audio file be placed on the county website for public access, much like the uh, the video. From Wednesday morning, is that going to be 
uh, difficult to do. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good suggestion. Secretary, would you write that down? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I do with my, yeah, it's my, my yeah. scratch paper over there. Didn't oh, you? yes, I am. And it's only, it's, um, you know, if, if let's say the commissioners meet 50 weeks a, a year, Commissioner, and um, it'd be over $1,100 to, to, to get that information via CD mm -hmm. each year per person. So um, I think. Now, the question you're asking, Kevin, mm -hmm. is, is on the audio file, not the video, because that is, that is public. That's all it's available. Public domain. So you're asking. The audio file from the Tuesday morning work session? All Tuesday morning work sessions, or? Yes. It shouldn't be that difficult just to place it on a website for public to access. And the fact that there Tuesday are... Tuesday and Thursday is what you're asking? Oh, that'd be great. Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to get yes. the question. Yes, Correct. Tuesday no, and Thursday would be the question. I've been wondering that. Too. Okay, there you go. And with two other elected officials in the audience, Commissioner. Pardon me? And with two other elected officials in the audience, I want to recognize the assessor, Josh Gibbons, and uh, yeah, we did earlier. Yeah. And the chair. And then the chair of the library. The library district, district yes. voluntary. Yes. So um, I had one question relating to um, each of their responsibilities. Um, the first question has to do with the intergovernmental agreement between seven counties. Has Jackson County voted on that IGA yet? And uh, I see the assessor. So if I understand, Josh, that was the that was the initiative possibly amongst the assessors to kind of combine some work for us. Is that what you're talking about? I think, and I remember the first time I heard about it was at our District 4 meeting a year ago. Yeah. When it was brought up in Grants Pass. Am I, am I, am I tracking on what uh, Kevin's asking? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you need to answer the question because it hasn't gone anywhere with us. I haven't introduced it to the Board of Commissioners because I'm still debating whether it is the right move for Jackson County. When it all comes down to it, it is a, there was initially three projects that came down to one project with Lane County um, using lists to find if there's new, uh, if there's businesses that aren't paying personal property tax. And to cross-reference our database, with their database of lists that they've acquired from national database things. And so I haven't even brought it up to the Board of Commissioners as of yet. Um, I know that there was some stuff that happened in Josephine County where the commissioners did not or voted against it. And I'm still going, is it the best move for us? Are you up against a deadline to no. present that? No. It's either we do it or I bring it to the board. I mean, it's either I bring it to the board or I don't bring it to the board. There's nothing that uh, says that Jackson County has to be involved at all. Do you have an opinion right now? Are you still in research mode? Or? My number one opinion is, is like Don said, he has to... Um, not so much, well, I guess I am uh, doing the will of the people because they voted in Measure 5 and Measure 50, and so that's what I'm working with. And in that Measure 50, which I have to shall go after personal property tax or make sure that it is on the tax roll, one, it is, it accounts for about 2% of our tax roll countywide and $150 million statewide. And it's a lot of work on not only our end, but the business community in general. And I, in my own personal belief, wish it would go away, or there was momentum to make it go away. Um, that in place, whether my personal beliefs or not, it is a high-level project that it doesn't cost Jackson County anything to, well, besides the resources to, to send the database to them and cross-reference that. 
will it find more tax dollars? That's not my purpose as assessor. It's to make sure that uh, everything's taxed at 100% real market value. Um, I don't know if it will do any good. So I'm 50-50 each way. Are so you? No, I haven't made an ultimate decision. On are you seeing a negative ROI on the enforcement of that then? Potentially. Uh -huh. Okay. It depends because there is a threshold of $12,500 for if a business doesn't have that much value, then it's exempt off the tax roll. And so are you only getting small businesses that you go out and you do all this work? Because I'll tell you one thing, personal property just to administer with what we have is a lot of monies that my budget has to absorb. Uh -huh. And so, in general, it takes a lot of resources to get very little gain, but, or very little tax revenue, but the losses we have to do. And so, what was your general? I've kind of been rambling. That answered it. In. That answered it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thanks, Josh. I didn't know you were going to be on the spot. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean for you to be. And then the library district question. Um, I'm not sure what's the how many millions of dollars was transferred from the county to the library district. Oh, what was, what was that final? What was the final? Uh, transferred to us. Well, you as far as none, no, none actually, none, none physically tra or transferred. How much did we levy this year? No, I don't think that's your question. No, Is it? they haven't transferred. We have not transferred assets, nor has there any been any money that is transferred to us. We have an intergovernmental agreement where we are purchasing services from the county and they're graciously allowing us not to pay until December our first payment and then we'll be I think that may be what he's, what he's getting at. Yeah, your payment against a zero interest loan or what? Well, we're, no, they're, we, they upfront the money until December and we pay in December because by then we'll have property taxes. After that point, we're going to pay ahead of the schedule. So at the end of the time, we'll be pretty much even. They will not have fronted us money. And they will have fronted us money, but we will pay them in advance for the rest of the year. So at the end of the time, it'll be pretty much a wash. Yeah, that's your question. Yeah, some, myself included, believe that the levy was to shift monies from the county over to the library, the newly formed library district and I'm I'm taking that that understanding was incorrect then yeah well what what I'm trying to explain is is that the library the library is already in our budget our 1415 excuse me here no problem 1415 budget okay so the inter, the IGA with the district was is they've contracted us for X amount X amount of dollars for the services provided what she's saying is we didn't we don't expect a monthly payment for that Okay, so it's not a pay-as-you-go sort of a deal. After November, after Josh gets the the, uh, the, uh, the tax, tax roll certified, yeah, well, and, right? Okay. Yeah, because it well, I certify it, then it goes to the tax. Well, to the state. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When they start receiving revenue, then they're going to pay us back right away for that. So that that's that's what it is. So low interest. We already had it in the budget anyway. We're going to get it back. So it was a actually it was a good deal because there's no way. That, that the district could go into operation July 1. I mean, it was, it was impossible. And, and we talked about that before, during the, during the process, about how was, how was that possibly going to go. And there was some different options ran around. And I thought it came out, that I thought it, was, it worked out for both sides. And, and well, you as the chair, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'll put it from a, a county commissioner's point of view. So what is the priority of yours for the next three months? What your no, your next six weeks? <laughs> six weeks. My next six weeks. As you wrap things up, what, what's your focus? Well, there's uh, there's some some things that I'm going to try once more to try to get. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, run before my uh, fellow board of commissioners uh, an opportunity to see if I can, we can get a special or an election next uh, March for nonpartisan for county commissioners. It's something that's been near and dear to me for four years, and, uh, and it would be a. What does that mean? Well, 
What do you mean? What? 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 what yeah. So, well, what I, what I think is county commissioners ought to be nonpartisan. We don't deal necessarily in those big ideological situations that, that maybe at the national level that identifies maybe a D and an R or an I. I don't believe. Some of the decisions we made falls in line with some of those ideologies, but, but it, we, that doesn't necessarily mean just because, well, for example, I'm an R and I've been accused that I'm a, I'm a terrible R because I don't necessarily follow some of the tenets of the Republican Party, okay? But, I, but my deal is, is I'm looking at the county, things that are important to the county. And I don't think that some of these things that are talked about aren't, aren't important. I mean, they're important, but not to the running of the county. So that's me. All right, so I just think county commissioners ought to be nonpartisan. This last election, three counties voted on nonpartisanship. All three of those passed. So uh, we're one of actually. What, what are the three counties? That one passed this year. I forget. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, but I know the three that was on the ballot passed. Which is interesting because when you look at uh, the uh, major 60, which was an open primary, yeah. got crushed. Mm -hmm. Measure 90. 90, 60. I knew 60 wasn't right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, measure 90 uh, to make an open primary, uh, all of California, if you will, that they just initiated a couple of years ago. But it got crushed on the state. It was 70, 30, something like that. Mm -hmm. But yet three counties, and, and actually Jackson's a handful out of the 36 counties, I think there's only about 12 if at the most that are still partisan work county commissioners, board of commissioners are partisan. But anyway, so I'd like to see, I'm going to tilt the wheel minute windmill one more time at that. Other than that, there's not, we're going to continue some of the same, we'll continue to try to put some pressure on through uh, Commissioner Rasher and Commissioner Breidenthal to try to keep pressure on, on the feds, on Senator Wyden and so to see if we can come to some sort of natural, but we're in a coalition of many counties, both here in the state of Oregon and nationwide, we're working on that. I mean, it's talk about your windmill sort of deal. Are you talking about the sport track? No, I'm talking. I'm just talking about being able to get in and utilize some of our natural resources, i.e., timber. Okay. So. Uh, so what is your standing on the wind tunnel? I'm for it. I'm for it. You and I are going to disagree here. I'm for it. And I'll tell you why I'm for it. Okay? I'm for it because I'm, I'm for all for economic development. Okay? And I think this would be a sea change, especially for the South Coast and also for Southern Oregon because some of that economic boom is going to bleed over to Jackson County. Medford will continue to be the health, financial, services, uh, uh, commercial center of our area. And so if, if things are doing well in Coos Bay and Coos County, some of that money from an economic standpoint is going gonna, gonna to bleed over to ours. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at anything we can do to improve our economy without, now again, we're, we'll probably disagree here, without having some, I'm not for black clouds into the sky. I've lived in this valley for 60 some years. I know how it was when it was really bad before the mills cleaned up and we did away with, or we put big restrictions on wood burning stoves. I mean, it was terrible. So government can do some good things with regulations. Okay, but that was something you put your hand, hang your head on. I think the LNG thing, uh, from again, what I've read, from a safety standpoint, yes, is there a possibility a pipeline could explode? That could happen. Planes fall out of the air. I mean, there's no absolutes. But I think it, it's the safety record is good, so I think it, it's good for Southern Oregon. It's especially good for Coos Bay and Coos County. It'll change that community around 100%. Well, now, I, well, weather I, one. I just attended the emergency preparedness meeting at the Armory, and the Cascadia Fault is pregnant and ready for an over 9.0 earthquake and tsunami. So how? And this lane terminal be good for Coos. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember, do you, excuse me for interrupting. Do you remember the big earthquake in, in Alaska in 60? Barely. Okay. Well, I'm old enough. Sorry. Some of you weren't even born at that time. Okay. I remember it. I had, the, had, the, had, the, had the, uh, the pipeline in place there. Yes, it caused some ruptures. It got to it quickly. I mean, there wasn't a, there wasn't, there wasn't a, uh, a um, 
catastrophic occurrence as far as from the environment standpoint, as far as that oil pipeline was concerned. Yes, Cascadia is on the horizon somewhere. Somewhere, sometime. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen 10,000 years from now. But somewhere it's going to happen. Well, but if we, let me finish, please. Let you ask me a question, yes. let me finish. Okay? So we can't continue to say, well, we can't do this because this is going to happen at some time. So, Actually, they're saying it will happen this time. Oh, century. come on. No, they seriously okay. are that they have grafted out how frequently the entire thing happens. Okay. Well, that's your opinion. That's some oh. people's opinion. It's uh, so. This was the emergency okay. planners who just gave their four hour. Twice. So it's not the, it's not Chicken Little calling the sky's gonna fall. No. 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 Okay. okay. Well, again, we disagree <clears throat> on that. So I am definitely for the LNG pipeline and for the terminal. Can I ask that? You specified the logging. Is that? It? I talked about natural resource. Yeah. So utilization or at least some harvesting. Does this correlate with the um, proposal that White was putting in the Congress regarding uh, cutting down old growth trees rather than? Well, the, the, the senator still has, has a provision to protect old growth, it's 30 inch and, and above, okay? So, and, and the industry is saying that, okay, we can live with that. We, we can live with that, that's okay. We just want to get in and, and do some harvest. And I want to tell you, I am not, I have seen the damage that unlimited logging can do to the environment. All you have to do is, is, is go over to the coast and drive there and see where, I mean, complete. But that's back before people didn't realize the damage that they were doing, you know, or they didn't care, whatever whatever we want to say. The industry is so much different now today than it was 100 years ago. And, and so I'm not saying do away with all the regulations, but right now it's locked up so tight. Commissioner Smith, who was commissioner, he's retired now, he, he had a, a phrase that I thought was that says it exactly. We have a situation where people are starving to death with a refrigerator full of food. And so from our economy, if we could get in and do some harvesting, sustainable harvesting, and stop treating those trees as sacred beings and treating them like, no, this is me speaking, Don Scundry, a, a stock of corn, which is a, a, which is a, a harvestable crop that can grow be harvested, grow, be harvested, and grow, because we see it done on private land, okay? But now, this this has taken on this this um, spiritual, if you will, you just don't want to be in the tree, you can't do it, you can't cut down anything. And that's wrong, in my opinion. Okay, remember, I'm one person, in my opinion, I think that's wrong. I think we have an opportunity, 48% of, of Jackson County is under federal land. 48%, 52% of the state of Oregon is under federal land. Those are lands that are tied up in our county, in our state, that we have, we, we're tied up. No, do we want to go hiking? A young man like you, wonderful. You know, you can go hike and try, and I think that's awesome, and we need land like that. Absolutely. But do we want to tie up everything? I mean, is that fair to all the taxpayers? So that's the reason why. I get a little passionate about that, I'm sorry. Dude, is it strictly, this is going with the uh, question I was hoping to ask. So to what extent does business have more sway? I don't want to make a good or bad judgment about a preliminary. To what extent does business have more sway and voice in these types of legislation than other groups oh, that are? Oh, my, I mean, I tell you what, anymore now, at the at the legislative level, let's just talk about the state of Oregon, okay? Let's forgive Washington, D.C. Lobbyists have a lot of sway, whether they be environmental lobbyists or industry lobbyist. I mean, unfortunately, our government has become so complex that the person that we send, Senator Bates, Representative Buckley, uh, you name them, it's impossible for them to understand every issue all the way through, so they have staff to do that, okay? So, and staff needs to be trained, so you have, you have, you have on one day, they have an environmental group come in and, and tell them all the things that are bad, need to be done. The next day they have somebody from industry come in and tell them all the things that are good. Then the staff person goes to the congressman, the senator, et cetera, the representative, 
and tries to weed this through so he or she can understand the issue. It's incredibly compact. At the, at the county level, we get none of that. And, and, and then that's really good. I mean, that's really good. Did we have during the GMO issue folks from Syngenta come in and talk to us? Yes, individually, we did. Okay. Did I have 10 times the amount of people from the anti GMO come in and talk to my office? Linnell can tell you that. She sits right outside my door. Yes. So I'm getting, you know, I'm getting that from both sides. And, it, and you name the issue. So, so but, but to say that industry, they got a lot of money to spend, I mean, in certain issues, okay, but so does the other side. So it's it's not a you know it's not sometimes just easy to paint the bad guy over here, whomever the bad guy. If you're on this side, they're the bad guy. If you're on this side, they're the bad guy. One needs to really look at the facts. So. So in terms of local control of local land <coughs> use, it sounds like you're more persuaded by industry. No, I'm not persuaded by industry. I'm persuaded by economics. That's why I'm not. I have nobody from Boise Cascade or, or you name the mills and beat down my door. Okay. Well, economics is just the flip side of the environment. You tell that. Well, I'm sorry. I don't understand you. To explain economics that. is the flip side of the environment. The environment is being resourced faster than it can renew itself and climate change is occurring. So have you gone to any of the climate change? Oh, I've looked, at, I've looked at a lot. There is climate change, there's been climate change going on from the, since the millennium. Climate change has this. I mean, I think we went through an ice age. I think we went the other way. I mean, we have a history, a world history so of climate change. Do you not believe in global warming? I think it's warming some, yes. Uh -huh. There's happened, how many more billion people are on this earth than there were hundred years ago. Well, the scientists are in pretty much agreement that global warming is man-made. I, I, I would agree with part of that, too. So. But there's more people. Just my body, just my body being in this room is going to create some heat in this room. It's just, that's, that's biology. That's, that's just the way it is. So you put, this room would be much cooler if the three, five, seven, nine of us weren't in here. That's true. I can't argue with that. Well, that's not what's causing climate change. It's just people. It's what people. So, what are those people to supposed to do? What What are those nine people? What are those people supposed to do? What What to sit? I mean, what they have families to feed. They have, and I thought I said I thought I made it clear, or maybe I didn't make it clear. I thought I said at least earlier. I'm not for I'm not for going out and, and destroying the environment and. And ignoring all great rules and regulations, I'm not for that. But by gosh, we've got I've got 208,000 people in this county, okay, including the cities, incorporated areas. 208,000 people that are raising families. Some of them are raising families. Are trying to do the best they can. They need jobs. They do not need the government just to keep giving them money. We need to create jobs. But if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. And maybe they need a new type of job. This county, this county has reinvented itself since the 1970s. I came here in 1954 as a kid you know, with my parents. I was 12 years old when agriculture was it. I mean, that's that was that was Jackson County. Yeah. Now Ashland, this town here, was a railroad town at that time. People in Ashland have a hard time believing that. But it was a big railroad town. <clears throat> so you had the railroad in Ashland. You had mills. There was five mills in Ashland. Okay. You had mills all up and down 99. Of course, no freeway. Mills all the way up and down 99 through White City, through Medford, Central Point, White City, Rogue River, all the way up 99. Okay. Cutting trees all over. I agree with all that. I'm not for that. Today, we have one lumber mill. We have three plywood mills. In the county, in the whole county, in the whole Jackson County. Are those okay. all around Medford? Or no, no, most of them. You got, you got one in Rogue River. Okay. You got Boise Cascade in Medford. You got. Um, who am I missing? There's somebody. Timber. Timber products. Timber products. Timber products. Thank you. <laughs> They've been here forever. The Gagnes. Uh Timber products. I mean, that, that's it. So. We have 
gone from a timber-driven economy in Jackson County to an incredibly diversified economy. We have outstanding, we have two outstanding hospitals here that provide some of the best health care in, in the United States. We have an amazing amount of small advanced manufacturing, doing things from electronics to, uh, to um, uh, technical chip stuff, and it's way over my head, though, uh, some electronics, I'm doing a lot of stuff like that. So we're tourists, we, we're a lot more tourists now. We're, we're a different economy. And so we're, we don't do the same thing that we've always done, okay? But that doesn't mean we have to, we, we just stop the, considering other options. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm trying to build, it, it, you talk about, a, and I only got six weeks to do it, so I'm not going to do it. But my point being is, as a diverse economy, so, so that we can put people to work. The people, I have two boys. One lives in New York City, another one lives in Los Angeles. They graduated from college, there was no opportunities here. I would love to see it, that given if I could go back 40 years when they were just babies, and say, boy, we, we, there's opportunities for you right here in Southern Oregon. You can't do that unless you grow jobs. Well, with climate change accelerating, the types of jobs that need to be grown are... I, I would agree. And we, and we have to look. We have to look for those jobs. We have to look for those type of jobs. We have to look for those kind of industries. We have uh, we have a very uh, sensitive air shed here. We're you know we're, we're mandated by federal law uh, for for particles within the air, PM tens and PM fives. We understand that. So so we're not looking for a smokestack here. We're looking for clean industry. But there are places where where that, that seems to work. So I'm just just to say that's bad and that's bad. So condemn it all over. I'm against. Well, one of the reasons the ban in Jackson County was to protect this county's agriculture because there's only seven or eight counties in all of America that are GMO free and the consumer demand for organic non-GMO is just skyrocketing. So I mean that type of food has to be Okay, well I'm more okay I'm kind of a market driven person so I, I would say if in fact that demand continues to grow it's amazing my industry responds. Do you have a question, John? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a perfect forum for it. Can I Fire away! Uh, first, a small matter regarding climate change and the global warming, uh, the word usage. I think there is some confusion that it's not warming. The warming specifically has to do with the ozone layer. So it's if the Earth temperature uh, becomes hotter or cooler, that's not the point. The point is that there is. Um, greater effects, uh, greater inconsistency in the CO2 cycles that, that the atmosphere has, and that can create either uh, expanded uh, uh, ice sheets, uh, if that case, you know, or receding ice sheets, etc. Right, or understand that. Expanding hurricanes. So it's not necessarily warming that's an issue. It's, a, it's a, 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 a structural change within the climate. So regarding the uh, economy uh, and economic job. Uh, job growth, I wonder if, because there's been no civilization in world history that hasn't used trees or hasn't used the environment, so that's probably not the problem, it's how we use the environment and how we put on parks and natural resources. Um, so would you favor more regulation on the private consumption of it, or do you think uh, private consumption of these natural resources may lead to these inconsistencies and the need for regulation? I think there needs to be regulations, and, and like I, I said a few moments ago, when I, we first moved down here in 54, uh, in the summer times you couldn't see the hills, quite honestly, in the hot summers. Uh, in the springs, because of the smudging in the orchards, uh, my mother, I don't know how many times she, she laundered our drapes. We lived in Talon, about five acres in Talon. That was when the lack of regulation and I use this, I think it's a classic example of the good that can come out of good regulation. Okay, So industry was mandated with the timbers, and, the, and I mentioned the, the timber companies and the, and the wood stoves and et cetera, you've got to clean up your act. Because if you don't, we're shipping you down. Okay, Industry stepped up and put in millions of dollars, mills closed, 
because uh, they couldn't afford to do it and so on and so forth. And, i.e., I can look out on a day like today. Of course, normally at this time of the year, even back in the bad days, it was, it was pretty good. But in the summer, like I say, now I can look out. I live over on the southeast side of Medford. I can look out with Roxanne. So Grizzly Peak, I can see all of that. And that's because government stepped in and said, you shall not do this any longer. Okay. There are, there are times because, you know, we're human beings and we're greedy. We're just, that's one of our innate problems with us is we are greedy. Okay, and I mean you can count greed from, from money uh, groveling just to be greedy. I want, I want a, two pieces of pie and you only get one piece of pie. So you can define greed in a bunch of different ways. So we need to be checked. That's the reason we have laws. Where I think we've made a mistake is, is we've swung the pendulum from here to a lack, a lack of regulation. You have to turn clear back to the late, to the turn of the 19th century, to the 20th century. To over here, where because the legislature doesn't have anything else to do, he writes a bill, or she writes a bill. And now you have this myriad, I mean, take a look at your tax, you try to figure out, do your taxes, you know. Uh, I mean, we, we've just gone, and, and businesses suffers that. Everyone suffers, I mean, the, the, I just think we're just burdened down with way too much regulation. Good regulation, yes. Regulation that controls industry, yes. In cases, okay, but just regulation for regulation's sake is, I think, we've got more. So, anybody else? Just a second, Nancy. Let's see if there's anybody else, please. Commissioner, I appreciate your perspective on, um, from a historical perspective, you, you have an appreciation for uh, not just um, Oregon history but American history and such. I was wondering what your particular definition of of fascism is, and and it's going to lead to my next. Uh, question. <clears throat> Fascism is, uh, is, is, in my opinion, and this is not Webster's definition by any stretch of the imagination, but fascism is, is where the government takes control of the day-to-day, -day. and it's interesting because I'm stopping my tip because it's it walks it walks in lockstep with just what one would think would be the opposite. So when in complete, well, I'll use communism for an example because in both cases, the human spirit is beaten down because they're there to serve the state. That's 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 the reason for people. They're there to serve what the state thinks is right. Okay, whether that be whether that be a communist, whether that be Osi Tung or. or Stalin, or whether that be Hitler, or what, or some of the folks in Africa, it's the same. The, the issue is the same thing. We call it two different things. Okay. As opposed to, we'll be the other side of that coin. Well, the other side of that coin is 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 what? Okay. So what are we doing? Not what, are, what is government? <laughs> I'm going to sound like John F. Kennedy here. It's not what the government's doing for us. What are we doing for the government? I mean, what are we doing for the country? When I say government, I'm talking about the country. What, what are we doing? What are we doing as, as citizens of this country to make this a better place to live? Nancy's point to make this world a better place to live. What are we doing? We have, in my own opinion, I'm getting away here, because we're, we're not talking about county, county issues, and I vowed not to do that, but I only got two more of these, so what the heck. <laughs> Go um, for it. <laughs> is that we become so entitled, we step by and we wait and see, okay, what's the government going to do for me? Now, that can work both ways, okay? So that can go for the, for, and when I use the word environmentalist, I hate that word actually, because that means it sounds like I'm, 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 I'm making them bad people. I don't believe that. Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know that. You, I, that's yeah, it. I, don't, I don't feel that. You represent yourself. But unfortunately, we've come, come, we use names to demonize people. So I'm going to continue to use that, but I think I hope you understand the extremist on that side, okay? And the same way with the extremists over on the other side, on the right side, okay? I don't think that, that drives me nuts. They're, they're, what happens is they get so caught up in their ideology that they forget, well, wait a second, what, 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 what's good for this group here? What's good for this group? So when I talk about fascism, that's what I see when I see you know, Adolf Hitler didn't really care about the people of Germany. You know, he did initially. I mean, he had some, he had, you know, he got, you realize he was a war hero in World War One. 
And when he came in, his thought was, okay, if we could just build a stronger central government, we can turn, I can turn things around. Well then, another good example would be Napoleon, but that's what happens. And all of a sudden you get caught up so much in, in who you are and what you are, and by what you are it means all your lackeys around you, that then the people, all of a sudden you stop worrying about the people. It's what can they do for me, for what I want to get done, so. Huh. Yeah, that, that uh, mindset got Hitler elected, uh, so I'll concede your point there. Um, you mentioned in past town halls that uh, you believe and you feel strongly that SoReady is underfunded, and I'm wondering if you can clarify the underfunding aspect of SoReady. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, SoReady is, for those that, aren't, that may not know, is, is, is a, uh, is a, uh, a 5013C uh, corporation that works in conjunction with uh, the EDA uh, as a grant funder DEA. And, and a small loan. You used an acronym there, it wasn't familiar. Economic Development. Uh, so, it's a federal federal program. They provide money for low interest loans. Okay, and they're the, they're the purveyor of those loans. So, but that's only one part of the deal. The other thing that is they do is they work with a district, which is Josephine and Jackson County. And that and that is a district. And and so their their mission is to Build the economy within those two accounts, into those two counties. And there's two ways to do it. The, the the sweet and sassy and fun way is to bring new businesses into the county that have not been here before. Uh, hopefully, the larger the sweeter. That's the whole deal. Bring new jobs in. Bring higher wage jobs in. That's what makes the front page of the Metro Mail Tribune or the Ashland Tidings. That that's it. That's a small part of their mission statement. Their mission statement, the better part of the job, but economic de development, seven out of 10 jobs created in the United States, this is, work, this is nationwide, are created by existing companies. And this is, like I say, this, this rule applies nationwide. So the idea is you build the companies that are within where you're at, and here it would be Jackson and Josephine County. You build them, you hope you get them to expand, you can be smarter, market their products, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's so Ready's other part, that's a larger part of the mission. Specifically to your question, they do this, they do this with, with three staff people and, and a gal at the front desk. That, that, so they're, they need, they're, they're supposed to be out recruiting, they're supposed to be working with businesses within the two, two counties, okay, and they're supposed to be managing the loans, the money that comes from the feds for the small business. Loans and what small business don't confuse them with the small business uh, portion of SOU. They're underfunded. They can't get those three people can't get the work done, and I've said that for years. And they're they are they're resource poor. They can't. They need they need more personnel to get the job, and that's the reason. And that's it in a nutshell. Is they need more resource to hire more people. And I'm not talking about a big bureaucracy at all. I'm talking to a couple people. And so they can be about doing a better job accomplishing their mission. Now, with that, it's not only paid staff, the, the members are so ready. Those board members and just members, they need to be out doing the job as well. I mean, because let's face it, the business community, and I'm sure in the environmental community as well, <coughs> there's strong networks. You have friends that think the same way you do. I have friends that think the same way. You have the friends that think the same way, so you know you all commiserate and sort of say, well, the folks are so ready. Uh, they need to be doing the same thing. But they need but they, they need that infusion of cash. That's the reason why I brought it up. Do you feel as though the increase from 26,000 a year to 123,000 a year the was? 200, actually a total of $201,000. Thank you, including the professional recruiter. Yeah, well, that, that's not so ready. And I voted against that. I appreciate that. Uh, and but you're including that amount to to arrive at the two hundred. No, no. The the, the two hundred one thousand for so ready. We we funded them an additional one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Okay. When so ready was formed, twenty six years ago, Jackson County, Josephine County, City Metro, and City Grants passed were the, were the seed money. We each put in twenty six thousand dollars. Twenty eight years ago. It's never been increased 28 years ago. I mean, just take inflation. So, 
At 201,000, do you believe that's still underfunded? Oh, I, I mean, if we had more money, if I was, if I was Bill Gates and, and, and well, I know his, his foundations are pointed to a different area, great. They do, he and Melinda Gates Foundation do awesome stuff. So let's just, let's take somebody else, another huge foundation that I had. Yeah, I, I put more money into them, so I think they do a better job. But, but this is what we got, and uh, I, was, I was pleased that we were able to do that. How much more would it take to fully fund so already in your opinion? Well, I wouldn't want to see it go on forever, but you know, I'd like to I'd like to see it through some way, get about five hundred thousand about a half a million is what it would take. Just add infinitum until perpetuity or for how long? Oh no, I would never do that. For how long? I mean I don't know. What's they the would, I'd be holding them accountable just like any good business person would be. What's the measure so of success the where, where they can become sustainable? Isn't that the objective is to uh, achieve sustainability and mm -hmm. and what will be that measure for that metric to be met well economic development that's a great question that is a really good question economic development is not, I think you've heard me say this before but it's true is not throwing a switch you can't say okay you're going to spend X amount of money and I think that's where Mark von Holly made, made, made a mistake but you don't throw a switch and say okay then do this this is going to happen lights come on it doesn't work that way takes a lot it takes a lot of work but if if the, we'll see we're gonna well I won't be there the board of commissioners will keep them accountable on the money that they have okay what what kind of results are they showing okay do we start having a better feel around the business community within our own community within Josephine and Jackson County the chief was these folks are out working they're working with the people here they're telling businesses and that's actually our job but but we pay them to do it as we're sure glad you're here business you know whatever that business may be we're glad you're here. We're glad you. We want you to stay. Are we doing that? Are we start getting a better feel. Okay. Are, are they knocking on government's door, whether it be city councils or county commissions, saying, How, have you, "When's the last time we reviewed and, uh, your your uh, ordinances on blah 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 whatever?" You know, are they doing that? Are they advocating for business? Well, why not? If they're not doing it, then they're not earning the money. Is there going to be a first and second? reading and a public hearing on this already funding mm -hmm. and when's that coming up I don't I, I don't know sometime before I'm gone before you're gone okay because mm -hmm. I'd like to see it in place before then okay so what you consider is your legacy I don't have one well let me tell you yes let me say because <clears throat> I think it's hard to ask somebody what their legacy is because I mean that's what ego is getting involved and so on and so forth but let me let me no I've only been in for four years One of my goals when I came in is that, and one of the things I ran on was that I thought there was a, a real disconnect between governments and the county. We have nine incorporated cities in a county of 2,800 square miles. We are unique in the state of Oregon, outside the metro area, to have that many incorporated cities in one county. I mean, you look at our neighbors, they have two, the most. And, uh, and in, you know, Josephine, it's Grants Pass and Cave Junction. Uh, and then you have Lakeview and Lake County, so, so we are unique. And because of that, and that's good, I like diversification. Ashland's much different than Prospect. Bruce is different than Central Point. I mean, these communities have their own identities. I think that's really cool, I think that's good. But I, I use the example of, of, of 1787 when, when, when the Confederated States came together and said, well, we, we, have, we need a constitution, this isn't working really well. And the big argument going on between, okay, do we want central government, do we want, we want to still be confederated because Massachusetts is certainly different than South Carolina. I mean, they could already speak to each other. But through the wisdom of the amazing men and women that we had at that time, so blessed, but said, well, we've got to make this work. We, we've got to make this work. And we're going to do a lot better if we do it together. That doesn't mean South Carolina, you've got to go into manufacturing like, like Massachusetts. Massachusetts, that doesn't mean you've got to start growing cotton like South Carolina. But what we've got to work is we've got to work on tra tariff issues, we've got to work on uh, exchange of capital, and et cetera, et cetera. That's why I would like to see Jackson County, and that's what I work for. So let me, I have some accomplishments. City of Medford and Jackson County never talked to each other that they did. It was spitting at one another. Spitting at one another. I mean, <laughs> finger pointing. Medford was saying county, or the county was saying Medford, and because Medford's a big city, they're the big dog in the county. We now have an excellent relationship. 
we have a good we have a good relationship with the city of Ashland, and this is a lot of it because of, of this where ego is coming in. This is because I've worked very hard getting around to communities, town halls. I attend city council meetings as a guest, just sitting and listening, listening to folks around. And I think Jackson County, not everybody loves us, but I think we have a much better profile now within the county, within that 2,800 square miles, than we did four years ago. If I had a legacy, if I could say, Don, what would your legacy, would you like it to be? That's what I would like to have it be. Okay? Sounds kind of soft and mushy, but I think it pays dividends, because I believe in the relationships. That's the reason I do these things. You know, my wife would love to have me at home. She still loves me after 48 years. So, Our date uh, night has really changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's so that's so that's it. Uh, not everything's been accomplished, but uh, that's other questions, statements. Been awfully quiet over there. You got nothing you want to say? No. Okay. All right. John. Last one the next time. It's in Medford. Um, I don't know. I know. Do you know, Lynn? No. What is it? December eighth. Eighth. It? It'll be on our on our website. No. That's okay. also on our website. Okay. Early in August. Give us a call. And I'll yeah. I've got it on my computer. I just don't know my head. <laughs> this is how, this is how many have we done now? Yeah. Twenty. At least. Town halls. So has there been a theme that people bring up over? You know, that, that you get another good question. It really kind of depends on what the hot, uh, the subject du jour is, if you will. Um, quite, on, quite honestly, when the GMO thing was first out, <coughs> that was a hot issue. And Kevin, you know, I've you know, got some really, really hot, uh, not hot, I mean, really not nasty at all. I only had one nasty town hall, and that was White City, and that had to do with the corporation. I wasn't there. No, you weren't there. Uh, but other than that, we've had strong yeah, opinions being opinion. shared. So, so that was a, that was a, 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 a big deal, both pro and, and, and con on that. The libraries, of course, were a big deal. Chickens. Uh, pardon me? Chickens. chickens. Chickens were a big deal, yeah, when we did, when we changed the ordinance on chickens. Uh, <laughs> so it really, really kind of depends in that area. That's the reason I go to all the areas, because like I say, what's, what's hot national may not People in Central Point may not could care less about. Uh, I one of my failures, uh, quite honestly, is is when I first came into office, I, I felt from a since I have a strong business background, is that there are certain departments within the county that ought to be administrative as opposed to electoral. And Josh is right here, and I campaigned that I thought the assessor, the surveyor, and the clerk ought to be appointed positions, just like any other department head. And we referred it on the ballot, got crushed, 83% to 17 or something. It was really, and I heard about it for the next three years, uh, about what an idiot I was. But I felt strongly, and I was looking at it strictly from, from, a, from an efficiency standpoint. Uh, and, and quite honestly, we had some issues back then before Josh was elected. And I guess I'm not saying that because here, because I've said it before, we have outstanding uh, assessor now, we have an outstanding surveyor right now, and and uh, um, Walker does she does a, she does a great job with the clerk. So it wasn't personality driven; it was purely efficiency. But anyway, that was something I thought. It, and uh, but uh, anybody else thought I think the same way. Um, trying to think of some other. I've had some other defeats as well. Before I get those. Can I ask going back to the logging this year? The, mm -hmm. the you said there's a lot of regulation that may be inhibiting business and investment. Is that some of the arguments that was before? Well, yes. I mean, and, and you want to talk specifically to, to, to timber production or harvesting? That seems to be the, the center argument. Well, I mean, we can all go to the Spotted Owl, and I mean, that's the poster child for, for, for that. I think what, what I'm not going to make any friends here in certain, but. <laughs> Over the millenniums that, 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 that Earth has been here, we have species that have come and gone. Some of those long before man was ever here. Long before man was here. They were here for whatever reason, they went extinct. It, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of a natural progression, if you will. And progress is probably the wrong word, but it, it, it's a transition, if you will. 
And, and now we've got to the point, I'm talking, I, have to, I have a point here really in this, is that we've got to the point where, where we can't let anything, anything die. And I understand the importance of, of, of it may be symbolic, the salmon for example, and I'm not picking on them, but it's symbolic of, of a, a larger thing in our human experience. But because of that, for example, okay, spotted owl again, no poster child for the timber, but spotted frog, the, the, the merlet, this, this species, that flower, you know, I'll give you my biggest bugaboo, White City. Have you, have you been out in White City area? Okay. Let's call it Agate Desert. I mean, that's, that's geographically, that's what it's called, it's the Agate oh. Desert, aptly named. Uh, there was a, uh, during World War II, there was an army base out there, Camp White, Aragal White City, when, when the army moved out at the end of the war, World War II. Why were they there? Because there was nothing else there. It's got terrible clay soils, you can't hardly grow anything there. I mean, it's a miserable piece of land. Now, people don't live out there, and that's great for them. For me, it's a miserable piece of land. But, so we have this thing, uh, called vernal pools. And what it is, it's a, uh, geographically and horticulturally, because the soil, you can't, you can dump water. If we have a great big huge rain event, and you go out towards White City Eagle Point, you'll see standing water everywhere you go. It just doesn't, just doesn't drain because the soil is so bad. Well, we have, uh, we have these, these indentions uh, in the soil out there. In the, in this, Agar desert, if you will. Now, don't equate desert with sand because this isn't sand. In these vernal pools, we have a creature called the fairy shrimp, which is smaller than my thumbnail, and we have a particular type of flower out there. Because of that, we can't develop much of the land in White City, and that really was the land that was supposed to have been developed. There were mills out there one time, several mills out there one time, but when they left, but that, that was supposed to be the county's industrial land. So, so they weren't, so we didn't lose agricultural land and such. That, let's put all the industry out there in White City. That was the city of Medford's and Jackson County's industrial land. That land is so encumbered now because of the Vernon Pool issue but we can't use it. So we have acres upon acres upon acres of land that just sits there. For, for what purpose? I mean, for what purpose? So, so and I guess if I was a relative of the, of the fairy shrimp, I, wouldn't, I be, wouldn't be very happy about trying to get rid of me. And I don't mean to be silly or facetious here, but I mean, that's, I think it gets to that, or this particular flower. And, and that's just, I think, a, a, a good example, a classic example, how regulations and such get so start encumbering whatever one wants to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be industry. It could be anything. And so that's that's where that's where I feel. My question is you talk about the economic development aspect, though it seems that it's not that they don't have the money to invest, because they probably do. If they want to, they probably have the money to so back or or mm -hmm. in the bank account, so to speak. Though there's regulation impeding that. Uh, is this, is that the the argument the regulation impeding the investment in that well, I mean, okay, so you got a hundred million dollars and you want to make it two hundred million dollars? I mean, let's talk about real money. Well, now we got to start with B's instead of M's, but let's just say millions. Okay, am I, where am I going to look? I'm not going to put it into something where I'm going to lose that money. I mean, I'm looking to grow my money. Remember the old greed thing? Good business. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, so I'm going to look, so I'm not going to go invest into an area that is so encumbered with regulations that I have no, very little opportunity to grow whatever business that is that I'm talking about. I'm going to go look for someplace else to invest my money. I mean, especially, now that's if I'm the owner of the company. If I'm a stockholder, and I don't know how people feel about that, but if I'm an investor as a stockholder, why do I invest in that company? Because I want a return. Okay? That's the only reason I invest. I don't invest because I'm a nice guy. Now, there are many social investors, and I applaud them. They invest in companies because they morally feel this company forwards the same sort of field, the same sort of issues that they do. That's great. But for the average investor, you put your $1,000 or your $100 into whatever because you're hoping for an investment. You're hoping sometimes you're going to have double that amount in here or half again as much money or something. So, yes, to answer your question, quite honestly, yeah, I'm not going to, people don't invest 
in areas where they have no chance of growing the business. My, my understanding of history and economics and my own experience in the workforce, uh, working for a, for a small business, uh, who the employers work very hard and mm -hmm. set the employees up. As far as regulation on business goes, that hasn't stopped some of the major corporations and small businesses from flourishing from the 50s and 60s. It hasn't stopped small businesses and actually from building on to the establishment of taxes and regulations. It hasn't stopped that. It certainly hasn't. Um, uh, their profitability hasn't seen uh, remuneration wages or health benefits for employees. Um, so I, I, uh, while regulation may be a factor in the environment uh, yeah, as far as investing in timber and lumber, Certainly, we can get other experts to work with them to find sustainable ways of doing that. Well, and, they, and work on that. The problem is, and I understand, there are companies flourishing. Remember, I just got through San Diego, how we've reinvented our economy here in Jackson County. There are small businesses, five and ten people shops that are doing well, doing great, and awesome. Okay, and they're doing it. Now, they're, they're still bumping up against regulations, and your friends may, I mean, there's still regulations, but they're still flourishing. So, so, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, the last part of your question was? Uh, going back to a, a way to invest sustainably. And okay, to see thank you, yeah. thank you. So, and, and specifically speaking to the timber issue, I mean, yes, I mean, there are, uh, for example, Rough and Ready out in, uh, in uh, Cave Junction uh, in uh, Josephine County. Uh, they they're, they've completely re now they got a nice loan from the state of Oregon to do it, but uh, they've completely retooled their their operation out there. They had 100 employees that were able to bring back 60. Uh, they're going to solely concentrate on small diameter timber. Okay, so that so that's there's a case of working on sustainability and stuff. So yeah, there, there's a way to work on that. I mean, the human mind is I'm just so impressed to. I mean, everybody in the world is smarter than I am. It just makes me, it's just so amazing that, that human beings, for the most part, presented a challenge, come up with a solution. It may not always be the solution that everybody else wants, but comes up with a solution. I mean, we've proven that over the eons. And so, and I think that uh, we'll continue to do that. We do have an issue with population. We do have, a, we have, that, that's, that's an issue. But, uh, you know, and, and if I could add, I, I think it's, you know, I don't think it's going to be free that's going to solve the problem. Uh, I don't think it's going to be free that's going to solve the problem. Because uh, I don't think that is a part of human nature. I think self-interest is a part of human nature. Okay. And when we're put in, put in certain conditions, then greed will flourish if we have the ability to. Okay. I, like I say, it depends on your definition of greed. I would greed agree. Greed opposed to self-interest. I, I would agree with John that the presupposition that greed is a part of human nature is now um, I think the younger generation coming along is much more interested in having a planet for generations X, Y, and Z in terms of global warming. It actually has to do with the warming of the ocean water and the fact that the oceans are turning to a sea with the glaciers melting. There is a sea rise. And so if that continues, there certainly will be climate refugees coming here to Oregon. And in terms of the Cascadia fault line, I mean, every school in this state, if we do have a magnitude nine, those children are, if they're at school, they're gonna be in a death trap. So getting the building codes made for earthquake retrofitted and, um, I mean, that's an industry that would certainly benefit. Well, it's actually it's actually happening. I mean, it's uh, when I first moved here, we were in a in an earthquake zone two. We're now in an earthquake zone four. Well, they've remapped okay. everything. So, so, and the Oregon legislature now looking forward to this next biennium uh, is looking at spending something like I don't know how many million hundreds of million dollars for retrofitting uh, emergency services. Uh, which would include schools as well, and the, and the president of the Senate is, is looking for a lot more money. The problem is, 
good good idea. I mean, I had, I had school kids. I had grandkids at eight years old. I want him to be safe. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're together on that, okay? The problem is, where does the money come from? Where is the money? They're, they're, and I'm not talking to you, but there seems to be a general feeling that the money is just out there, that, and I'm entitled to a part of that, or my cause is entitled, and it may be, and it's just money. And, and, and we get to the point where we've got more people looking for money than we have those making it, because the money comes from taxes. I mean, that's, and, and the sale of bonds. Okay, I mean, that's where the money comes from. Uh, yes, they print it on a printing press or stamp it on it. I understand all of that, but basically, it, it has to come now. Our deficit, uh, we're going way down the my, my point is that somewhere we have to realize that, that we've gotten completely out of balance. But that, now, I'm going to stop there because that's the point. But I understand your yes, point. Yes, money has to be in support of a value higher. And money, money itself cannot be the end goal, or society becomes dysfunctional. But in terms of the younger generation and what they want, how in touch are you and the other commissioners, say, with the teenagers and the young people? I mean, John's an SRU student. Um, because it seems like a lot of the decisions are the government is deciding what SOU needs and they're not necessarily asking the students what they want to study. It's like they need more technology, they need more technology. And somebody up there somewhere decided Jackson County is too agricultural. But Senator Bates and Buckley believe that with protecting the local family farmers that Jackson County actually is going to attract more of that to the county. So it, it, it seems like there's a bit of a disconnect sometimes between maybe what the state and the county level wants for the county and what the residents and the city and the students and the people who were born here. I was not born here, I moved here. But the people who grew up here, what, I mean, there are still people in this county, I've heard it, that they still consider themselves almost a separate state of Jefferson. And, and so you've got this whole, you've got this whole mix of people here in Jackson County, which fascinates me. I moved up here from Pasadena and, you know, city So it's been like, oh. No, let me, let me stop you right there. And then I'm going to finish up on this because it's almost in the clock. Just my, my quitting time. But here's, here's the thing. I've got two statements to make. Number one is, is that you ask how connected we are. I think every generation has that issue about uh, how connected it is to, to the younger generation. I mean, that's time in memorial. In my case, I have tried to reach out. I, I, I attend uh, numerous SOU functions. Uh, I attend job fairs all the time. Uh, so I, I have a, a decent feeling, okay. Am I 18 years old? Am I 30 years old? No, I'm not. So I've got a different bias. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. I'm, I'm 73. Okay, almost 73. So I try to stay as connected as I can. I mean, I just had met with a young man today, urging him to get involved in, in, in the process. Uh, so, and I've done, that's not something new, I've done that a lot, because I think we do need younger people in government. But let's remember that government are, the government isn't some a monolith. Government are people. They're men and women elected to a position. Now, our bureaucracy has gotten such on the administrative side. That's all their story. But ultimately, their bosses are elected officials, from the president on down to the mayor of Ashland, city councilman of Ashland. We just had an election, and I share this from the bench uh, Wednesday before last, that I continue to marvel at our United States, how we can transition, how we can make changes, there's not a tank in the street. There, uh, that, that, that 
the losers, most of them are pretty gracious about in their concessions, whether they sincere or not, different story, but they're not out doing, you know, they're not out throwing a brick through a window. And we make, we make some pretty radical changes in our government system. And that's what I love about this country. So if, if when asking your question, is that how do, how, do, how do people connect? I love the ballot box. And I have no, I have no time for people who don't vote, period. So if, 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 if people have a strong feeling, GMO is strong, okay, more people wanted it than didn't want to get out and vote, okay. So that's how, that's how we make changes. I mean, that, that's exactly how we make changes. If we don't, if we don't, at least try to work it through that way, uh, I, I don't have a whole bunch of sympathy. So that's... Uh, so, so in terms of county rights and city rights, local... Um, say over local land use as compared to the state or the federal government deciding well, regulations. Well, you have to look at the Constitution about that. I mean, that is, is and Kevin, you, that's a whole different, that's a whole different argument, okay. The county, and I got in trouble uh, a long time ago about this by a certain individual that about when I made the statement that, that really the county are uh, slaves to the state. And what I meant by that statement is, is we are, the way this Oregon Constitution was written, and you go back to what counties mean, is that we are the arm of the state at a local level. And they set the rules, they give us, and this is not just Oregon, they give us certain latitude, but they set the rules. The state has to listen to certain rules that the federal government sets up. That's the way this country is set up. And it's worked pretty doggone well. Is it perfect? No, but it's worked out pretty doggone well. And I wouldn't want to live anyplace else. So with that, 10 o'clock.